Hey, it's Robbie again. This second video on the series is all about borrowing capacity. You would have heard me talk about during the four C's of lending, that bottom left-hand quadrant, how super important it is that you must understand what your borrowing capacity is. I'll sort of use the term, what's the left and right of arc as far as what your borrowing capacity is going to be. This is how the lenders work it out. So you've got your net income over here after tax. Remember, gross income is before tax, net income is after tax. So how much money lands in your bank account after your prepaid deductions have come out, come out? So the definition is all about how much money the lender assesses that you can borrow based on your disposable income, not your net income. And these are all the deductions that now they need to take into account. And this is like living, right? So cost of living by marital status and postcode, that's your HEM. Remember what that's called? Housing expenditure measurement. Then you've got your rent or home ownership costs, your personal loans or any salary sacrifice into your superannuation or a car. If you've got dependents, that is little kids, bambinos, or if you've got a non-working adult, so if your partner is at home and looking after the kids, for instance, then they are a dependent of yours or a mouth to feed, as they like to call it. Credit cards. Let's just say you've got a $6,000 credit card. Many a blank, many banks apply a five times limit to that credit. So even though a $6,000 credit card, which is not very much these days, in fact, it's a really sound amount to have there. It's enough for you to use you know, month on month, uh, but you know, it's not going to get you into too much debt. But at the end of the day, that's like $30,000 less that you can go and borrow. Sometimes if it's a little bit close to the line and we're sort of you know making sure we're maximizing what your potential for borrowing is, the mortgage broker might even suggest to so like, close your credit card, you don't need it anymore and if you know there's a time down the track that you can basically reapply for that credit card that can come into your life so you can see then we're left this little bit at the top called your called your disposable income that's what they calculate your borrowing capacity in now here's the thing i speak to so many other couples whereby generally mum's at home with the kids and she goes oh i think i'm going to go to back to work next year and i might earn 30 or forty thousand dollars i'm like that's fantastic because if all of your other cost of living elements are being taken care of by the primary income earner, you get 30 or 40 grand, it gets chucked on the top, bang, it goes straight into your disposable income. So even though 30 or $40,000 might be a somewhat moderate amount to, to earn, and for a lot of you know returning mums going back to work two, three, four days a week, that's pretty, pretty routine, it makes a massive impact on how much you can actually borrow because it goes straight into, into your disposable income and the banks are going to love you and you may find yourself in the game.